رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنمى Lots of people do zakat in Ramadan. Is it necessary to pay zakat in Ramadan? Who should pay zakat? Who should pay zakat al-fitr? These are many questions related to zakat. First of all, you have to understand what zakat is. We're not going to talk about zakat of livestock. We don't have livestock, usually. We're not going to talk about zakat of crops because we don't have farms, usually. And we're not going to talk about zakat of goods and commodities that are sold and bought, as in groceries, as in uh, a showroom of cars, etc. Because usually we're normal people. We talk about zakat of gold, silver, that is jewelry of the missus, or cash, which is what I save and possess, among others. So, what are the conditions of zakat? There are two conditions. Without them, zakat is not obligatory. Number one, that the amount of money saved or the jewelry possessed reaches what is known as nisab. And this is known as threshold. What is a threshold? It's a limit which below it, there is no zakat. What is this limit? Well, in terms of jewelry, if the missus has 85 grams of gold or above, and the caliber of gold is 24, she has to give zakat for that. If she has 84 sheikh, there's no zakat. If she has 85, but of 22 or 20 or 16 carat gold, there's no zakat. You have to do the math because when we say 18 carat of gold, this means that 18 carat is gold and six is compensated with copper. So it reaches 24. So this is false, it's not gold. So the 22, you have to do the calculation, the calibration until it reaches 24 carat of gold 85 plus in silver it is 595 grams of silver and the cash threshold is measured by silver so if you have the value in cash of 595 grams of silver which is approximately 300 dollars give or take then zakat is due this is condition one Providing that condition two is fulfilled, and that is that you possess this for a whole lunar year. So if I had it for 11 months, there's no zakat on it. 11 months and 25 days, there's no zakat on it. When it completes 12 lunar months in my possession, then I have to pay 2.5%. The easiest way to calculate zakat, whatever money you have, divided by 40, 40. The result is your zakat. Easy. If I have 40,000 dirham, divide by 40, the result is 1,000. This is my zakat. If I have 80,000, my zakat is 2,000. If I have 100,000, I wouldn't be here talking to you. 2.5, 2,500 dirhams. Clear? Clear. Alhamdulillah. We have this tendency, everybody is giving zakat in Ramadan. Why is that? They say it is more rewardable. We want multiplication of the ajr. We want Allah to love our good deeds in Ramadan. Wait, 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 wait. Akhi, this doesn't work like this. Yes, Ramadan is a blessed month. To give charity, not to give your due obligatory zakat. What's wrong in doing that? I'll tell you what's wrong. The poor get all their zakat in Ramadan. The coming 11 months, they're begging people for money. And this is not how it works. Your wealth 
has to be calculated according to the completion of one lunar year. It might complete in Muharram, in Rabi'ah, in Jamad, in Rajab, in the Hijjah, depending on the circle, the completion of the lunar year. But to deliberately intend to give it only in Ramadan, this defies the purpose of Zakat. If the lunar year is completed in Ramadan, خلاص, there's nothing for you to do. This is how it, uh, how it comes. But to insist on giving it in Ramadan, whether by extending instead of one lunar year, you say, I'm going to stretch it to 15 months. Haram. But if you shorten it, if your zakat is in the hijjah, and you say, no, I'm going to pay it four months earlier. So I pay it in Ramadan, no problem. This is for the benefit of the poor. Instead of waiting another four months, you are giving it ahead of time. There's no problem. But delaying it, no, it is not permissible. Who should pay the, the zakat? Usually women ask this question. Men never ask this question. They know that it's their obligation to pay their zakat. But women, they possess a lot of gold. And she doesn't want to pay zakat. So she asks, who pays zakat for my jewelry? Is it my husband? The answer is no. He's not obliged to pay the zakat for you. But Sheikh, I don't work. I'm a housewife. I have children. I am poor. I... Sister, you have a kilo and a half of gold. What poor are you talking about? You're rich. But you are dependent on your husband to pay it every year. If he does this out of his own will, Zahallahu khair. He's a loving husband. You should kiss his feet instead of nagging and giving him trouble. But if he doesn't want to, the person possessing the money, the person possessing the gold is responsible in front of Allah. I don't have an income, Sheikh. Sell some of the gold you have, and it's a small portion. You sell it and give 2.5% on that. Who should pay Zakat al-Fitr? Zakat al-Fitr is something else. It's called Zakat al-Fitr, Sadaqat al-Fitr. It is not related to your possession, to your wealth. It's a different category. Zakat al-Fitr is related to the charity you are obliged to give at the end of Ramadan. Time, Sheikh. When does it start? It should be given the night of Eid. So tomorrow is the day of Eid. You should give it before the Adhan of Fajr. The last night. And it can be up to the 27th or the 28th. So giving it two or three nights earlier is no problem because Abdullah ibn Umar used to do this and a number of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. So can I give it on the 15th of Ramadan? No. Can I give it on the 1st of Ramadan? Definitely not. Though some schools of thought say it's okay, but it's not okay. What is the amount, Sheikh? Zakat al-Fitr, as in the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and others, the Prophet ﷺ obligated Zakat al-Fitr to be one sa'ah. Sa'ah. What is sa'ah, Sheikh? I can't even pronounce the ain as you do. Well, this is a tool of measurement by size. So it's like liters, not like kilograms. So a sa'ah is a container. And this container is measured, or, or we measure with it, items like dates, like barley, like wheat, like sugar, things that are consumed and measured by size. One sa'ar is equivalent to four mud. And the mud is what is gathered in the palms of your hands. So if I have rice, I just do this and I fill it up. This is one mud. One, two, three, four. This is one sa'ar. So the zakat al-fitr is one sa'ar. If it is measured with rice, this one sa'ar, when put it on a scale, it weighs about 2 kilos, 0.125 grams. Of course, if I weigh in the sa'ar dates, the weight is going to be different. If I put in this size barley, it's going to be different in weight than rice or than wheat or than dates, etc. 
because the size is one, the weight is different. So usually the scholars give the weight in kilograms because this is the most common. But if they give the zakat in flour, it's different. So they have to go to the size again and check how much it weighs in flour, in barley, in uh, corn, in whatever. Who should we give it on behalf of? Well, it's the responsibility of the father of the house, the guardian of the house, the one who spends money and puts food on the table. And he has to pay it on behalf of those who live under his roof and eat from his kitchen. So we pay for Muslims, whether women or men, whether freed or slaves, whether young or old. And this is the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ. Why do we do this purpose? One, so that the poor would not need to beg on the day of Eid. So we suffice them from asking people for their essentials. Do I have to give total strangers to me? No. If I have relatives of my own, cousins, uncles, aunts, who are classified as poor or needy, then giving them zakat al-fitr would give me double the reward. Reward of zakat and reward of connecting my kinship. Providing it is not my responsibility to provide for them. What do you mean? I can't go to my son who is poor and give him zakat al-fitr because it's an obligation upon me to feed him. I can't go to my grandfather who is classified as needy and give him my zakat al-fitr because this is my responsibility. But if a sibling of mine, a brother who's married and if he dies, I will not inherit him because he has children or my father is alive and my sibling is stone broke. And I give him zakat al-fitr, this is valid and okay, and I get double reward. Can we give all my zakat al-fitr to one person who's poor? Yes. I don't have to feed, if I have 10 in my family, I, have, I don't have to feed 10 poor people. No, I can give all of our rice or wheat or whatever to one single poor person without any problem. <laughs>